And so I'd love to ask you first, man, is like, what are the negative connotations that you feel that come with competition, especially uh, with men? I feel Australia, like in Australia, especially, man, like jealousy. Like that's the first thing that comes on. It's just like, I, and, and it, it comes down to like this idea that there's not enough to go around. Yes. Yeah. And I've seen this, uh, and this is pretty strong in my family too, man. Like it's so, we had family Christmas and just the way that uh, we, you know, some of my family hold judgment around successful people. And in our, and what I feel is like, I have a few friends too, where we, we sit down and we talk and we speak about numbers. We speak about impact. We speak about why, why the fuck are we doing any of this? What's the actual point? And like, sometimes it's, you know, I'm too focused on impact. And it's like, Hey, Jacob, are you, can you pay the bills? Look at, look at the fucking spreadsheet. And that's pretty confronting for me sometimes because I've been so focused on how I can, you know, get these guys to where I, I know they're capable of getting. And sometimes it's to, to my own detriment. So when it comes to like the negative connotations, I think that competition is very much, yeah, jealousy, which comes through comparison, but normally yep. it's from people who are looking up to the people who are doing better than them. And I've had a few clients come through, bro, in the last year that are fucking murdering me on paper, absolutely yep. murdering me. And like some guys that are just kicking it in relationships, their business is thriving. They're about to go on like, you know, holidays, you know, got three or four holidays planned this year. They got a brand new car. They're living in a nice house. And I'm just like, this motherfucker you're meant to be less than me and i'm like hang on no this guy's fucking killing it man this is what you wanted like this is what you know let this inspire you so for me that yeah for i i'm very yeah i would say that for me the biggest thing is je jealousy which comes through comparison and almost yeah. just and what i do and this is this is probably my biggest uh shadow because i come from the country and i feel like i was disadvantaged because i didn't have all the privileges of the city kids who had access to everything i'm like oh they just got that because their circumstances were better they just yeah. got they you know i used to do this when i'd go to the skate parks you know i'd see these little kids oh they they're better than me because they've grown up at the you know at a town that had a skate park or these guys are better at surfing because they grew up near the beach or this guy's yeah. better than me because 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 and i keep yeah, saying man. because and it's just like can't he just be fucking better than you bro can't you let him be better and maybe ask him a question? So yeah. competition doesn't really have a lot of, I think for me, the antidote to that jealousy and that comparison is curiosity. Yeah. And, and humbleness as well, man. And like, like what you're saying is, because um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll mention what I just spoke off air is, um, yeah, late last year you ran the Gathering Men, 150 men there. It was nuts all over social media. Every time I was open my, like, to do my posts, I don't really scroll. It was just like Jake's on there, Jake's on there. And I noticed, man, I noticed the competition start to rise. I'm like, but, oh, yeah, because I think you started marketing back in March. It's like eight months out. I was like, oh, you're 150 men. And then I started in within myself, like, oh, well, fuck it, we'll do 150 at BV. And I started to think like that. And then it got closer. You guys did it. And I noticed within myself that comparison of like, oh, 150 men, there's all these people, there's men there that I knew and started getting these loops. And I'm like, man, okay, just chill the fuck out. It's like, actually process what's going on because i understand that if i'm comparing to someone there's some beauty in that there's lessons in that and like be humble okay jake did something fucking amazing that's really fucking cool 150 men here in australia fucking awesome is that something that i want to do and then like i said like, like actually i don't want to do 150 men i like the small intimate group and i'm like well fuck why why am i drawn to this why am i comparing myself to what the gathering men was and what I realized is that only reason I wanted to do that is so that I could be on social media and say that I gathered 150 men to get the pat on the back. And that made me realize, oh, bro, you're not validating myself. I'm not actually patting myself on the back for all the work that I'm doing. So I looked and took inventory. We ran a retreat in March. And I didn't run, I think it was March or February and didn't do anything else face to face until November. So it was like eight week, eight months, man, that I didn't do anything face to face. Much like you, that's where I want to be, man. The online space is COVID proof the business and it also allows the uh, consistency and dedication to get long lasting results for men. But that beautiful face to face is we can take men in a different uh, place. So I realized, that, oh man, that's why I was comparing to, to you. It's like, because I, I hadn't done it for myself, you were there doing this thing that I wanted to do. But then I had to remind myself, where was I at in life? What was I doing? 
So we just bought a family home. We had five months of renovation. I needed that time and the space and capacity to look after my security at home and not go and do that thing. And so it's really interesting, man, because that comparing to others, that jealousy and, and coming from that place of lack, I really feel is uh, one of the negative connotations when we when we get caught in these loops of like competing against other people. The other thing that the other two pieces that I feel is relevant also is that um, when we're in a place of competition, so I, I'll talk about myself, my younger brother as well. So I, I got in a really sticky place several years ago with my brother, but I was I, I gave him all my power because I wanted to be successful because he, he's very successful su- successful business uh, businessman. He's a builder. Uh, he's four years younger than me. He's qualified trading before he's 18. He's gone nuts, man. He, the stuff that he builds is next level. He's like he's beyond his, his years and time. He's got all the Master Bill Awards for Queensland. He's just like, um, like all the trophies, you know, all the trophies and everything. And he, he's wealthy, uh, uh, like monetary wealth. And so is my father. And so the two, my biological father, so the two men in my life um, back seven years ago were more wealthy than what I was. And it's just like, man, so I gave them my power. So the only reason I wanted to be successful in business was to go fuck you to my brother and my dad. So I handed them all my power to them. And that was like, that was my driving force, man. And so I had to work really close with the psychologist to get through that and just like, hey, man, you don't need to beat your dad. You don't need to beat your brother. Um, and the other one, man, as I feel the negative connotations is that when there's competition, like we've mentioned, and there's a you're chalking it up on the board, whether it's a business deal, whether it's a pay rise, whether it's 150 men and the gathering of men, um, whether it's the fucking table turn, whatever it is, man, is that when people step out of alignment of that values to win, I think that is the biggest one, man, where men go against their values. Um, so against their integrity, against their morals, against their beliefs, against what they know is right or wrong to climb over the top of people. I think that is where it really gets into a really sticky spot uh, internally. Have you noticed that, bro? Yeah, man. Yeah. Yep. It's, it, uh, it kind of breaks my heart because like one of the things that I, after, you know, just to sidetrack too, I love that story about you. my little brother's six years younger than me. He's a fucking builder. He's killing it. He's got cash stacked, bro. And it's just like this little yeah. cunt. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> but at the same time, because I I stepped out of the, the team sports space when I was younger and I got into action sports, that it became, a, I started to challenge myself. Like it was all about me getting better. And there wasn't a lot of competitions around. So we didn't go to, we didn't compete. We just went to the skate park. We just built jumps and we got better. So what I, I, probably overcompensated a little heavily where I went from being, I'm going to fucking slit your throat and fucking steal, you know, and kill you and to, to destroy everything you've ever created. No one will ever know you existed to, yep. I'm going to celebrate you as much as I fucking can. And I think yep. that's like the, the wound that, that that's revealed some of my gold is that I'm, I'm a, I'm a celebrator. Like I celebrate people hard, but at the same time, I don't celebrate myself. <laughs> yeah man. which is the which is the the issue for me is that like uh i haven't been able to like like you said stop and, and pat myself on the back stop and yeah. actually like say hey listen jacob you're doing you're doing enough you're doing enough you're doing a great what, fucking job why do you think that is man why do you feel that you can celebrate the people and not yourself uh i i think that i a big part of, and this is something that i've had to sit with many times was like, am am I just doing this? Am I doing all this men's work because I don't feel good enough? Is, yep. That's like being. That's one of my my scariest. I'm scared to like wake up one day and be like, Jacob, you're doing this because you don't feel good enough about yourself. So you need other people to tell you that you're the the person that saved them. Dude, literally, you are speaking exactly where I was three years ago. Um, so for those that don't know, I've got three children. Um, breath oak and ocean and so ocean is three in may and so just my wife is pregnant Minnie was pregnant with ocean and so we had a big men's movement here 500 men in the conscious men brotherhood chapter of the sunshine coast same with you man it's like coaching one-on-one running workshops run three day retreats and life was really fucking maxed like maxed as in like um the first two three years of the kids coming and uh, being alive the two boys i burned out so man i was on the couch for 10 to 12 days three years in a row just sleeping and i had bloods and everything done there was nothing wrong with me man just burn the candle both ends 
So you got to the point, my daughter's about to be born. And I'm like, fuck, I, I, I need help. And so I was just really reactive with many in a relationship. So I went and saw Darren Pence, a psychologist. And the beautiful thing with this gentleman is that he comes from men work, men's work. So he's, ten, he's a decade in men's work. Um, I think it was like MKP and that kind of stuff. And then did his uh, bachelor's or master's and became a psychologist. So uh, after our first session, he comes up. He's like, bro, do you want a hug? I'm like, fuck, dude. He gave me a hug. He goes, cool. Next time you come. You, you can let all the walls down, bro. Let me hold you. You don't need to come in here and pretend to be someone you're not. Just come as Blaze. I'm like, fuck, awesome. Because I was stepping in as Blaze, the facilitator. Yeah. And so, yeah, he did this process with me, man. So he goes, what do you got going on? And so everything I just mentioned, so I've got three kids, I've got the wife, I've got the CMB, I've got the retreat, I've got my one-on-one. I'm doing this and this. I put all that in the table. He's like, cool, man. Let's throw it all in the air. And he just went, huh. And he goes, quick, fucking grab it. I'm like, fuck, the kids. And he goes, quick, grab another thing. You only got two hands. I'm like, fuck. And I went to the retreats and then I was just like, fuck. And I just burst into tears, man, because like, where's my wife in all of that conversation? Like where, I wasn't choosing her. I was just burning everything, man. Like what you were just saying, man, about how we're providing that business. I was doing everything for everyone, but I forget about the most important woman in my life other than myself is her. And so that's when I stepped away from CMB, man. And this is where I went through this, what you were mentioning. So I stepped, stepped away from this baby that I built, man, three years of free men's circles and, and all of this stuff with CMB. I got to travel to LA and do these workshops with press and all these people. It was like amazing. But what it was, it was, it was feeding an identity, which was Blaze the facilitator or Blaze the coach, not just Blaze. And so what I realized when I stepped away is that all the, the, the validation stopped like all the external validation. So all the, like we used to run that meetup at a coffee shop. So all the local people were there, all the messages I used to get from the people's wives and the, the kids and all this kind of stuff, seeing them in the street, all that fucking stopped. And so I hit this point, man, like, fuck, I'm not doing enough for humanity. And I started like literally believing that I wasn't good enough, that I wasn't doing enough. And that the only way that I could be value on this planet was to actually, I had to be giving a bit of service. And if I wasn't that, I wasn't enough. And it was just, Big realization, man. So it's like, holy fuck. And, and there's a lot of there's three mentors of mine pointed to it. And everyone pointed to it, but I just couldn't fucking see it because it was a really hard pill to swallow to say that I was buying into an identity that was not really who I was. And then, so yeah, man. And then the, the, the culmination of all of that. So I had that realization. So that's when I started celebrating myself regularly. Uh, so every Friday, I sit down um, with, and I would lean into the men's team I was running. It's like we'd all celebrate ourselves, but it was mainly just for me, so I could celebrate myself openly. And then uh, we uh, another BV blokes let you come around. Day one, I got COVID, and it's just like fuck. And I built BV as it was like it was my thing. There's another baby man, and learning about business and scalability. Like you can't grow a business if you're the main person. Like if because if you're not there, how the fuck's it going to grow? And so it was really beautiful, man. And there's a couple of beautiful men that have come into the team and they, uh, before this BV, like, hey, man, you need to get documents and SOPs of like the outcomes of every single one of these processes. Those are like 32 processes we had. So I made this massive big document and video about outcomes and everything like that. Didn't, and it's just, so long as there's the outcomes there, we can, oh, it's so many different ways, you know, have many, there's many different ways we can skin a cat. So I had all these outcomes. So yeah, day one, COVID. Um, couldn't couldn't do it, and so openly said to the man, "Hey, I just got to sit on the sidelines." And there's this really beautiful moment, man. And you've been to the property, so everyone's having this big group photo. And Nelson, the videographer, everyone's there, all the facilitators, and here I am, way off the side, on this step, and I could see it. The men didn't ask, all the participants didn't ask for me to come in. No, the facilitators asked for me to come in. The videographer didn't ask for me to come in. But here's this massive big group of 40, 44 men, man, having this beautiful photo. Here I am at the back witnessing all of that, but I'm witnessing the fucking, the joy and the love and the success within myself. And no one saw it. No one. Just me and God, man. There's not on social media. There's no one patting my fucking back. It was just me, man. And that was that fucking like, ah, this is what it's about. Like this wholesome feeling in here of giving that I don't need anything. And this validation I get from just witnessing that, that's what it's all about, bro. 